first, let me lay the groundwork for this video. The rules of academic honesty for students are defined by university policy, described in the calendar, and summarized in all course syllabuses. The material here does not override or change anything in those policies. As students, you must be familiar with the expectations for academic honesty. This video is specific to mathematics courses. It gives you some specific guidelines for mathematical work, assignments and exams, and it tells you the specific expectations that I have for my students. The main point of this video is that mathematics is not fundamentally different from English or psychology or any other discipline in its expectations of academic honesty. You still have to produce your own work and credit your sources. This sometimes comes as a shock since many students seem to expect that mathematics is very different. It isn't. The same principles apply. And this document gives some specifics of how to apply those principles. Let me first talk about submitted work, assignments, take-home exams, any other mathematical writing you hand in. The principle here is simple. When you work, it must be your own work, your own thoughts, your own sentences, your own calculation. This indeed is the point of an assignment. I don't set assignments because I need to mark something. I set assignments to encourage you to do the active work of solving mathematical problems, which is nearly the entire point of taking a mathematics course. I want each of you to actually do your assignments, since that's where some of the most important learning happens. That said, working in groups on assignment is excellent and highly encouraged. Mathematics is well suited to groups, where you can remind each other of ideas and correct each other's mistakes and help each other through conceptual barriers. Groups are great. However, at the end of your group work, you still have to produce your own assignment. You should never be copying word for word or calculation for calculation another student's assignment. Please work together, talk through the questions, check each other's works for errors, all these things but please produce your own work at the end. And let me be more specific now about how you should produce your own assignments. Obviously, you can't just copy another student's assignment. That's cheating, regardless of whether you had permission to copy. Given that you are listening to this, I'm assuming you are in fact trying to do your work honestly. If you work in a group, you still need to write your own assignments. Often your calculations will be nearly identical to your group, and that's to be expected, though you should always do your own calculations and understand them, not just copy someone else's. Your sentences that surround your calculations, however, should not be the same sentences as any other students. Write up your own work and use your own words to explain calculations and answer conceptual questions. If you work with students in the class, Note the names of the students you work with at the end of your assignment. This is quite simple. Just write, on this assignment, I worked with name, name, and name. This is appreciated since it gives credit for the help you received from your group, and it also helps with marking. When the assignments are very similar, if I can see that the students work together, that similarity is expected. Again, identical assignments are still a problem, as I discussed before. It's fine if someone else, a friend, a family member, a tutor, etc., helps you with an assignment. However, it is not acceptable if they do the questions for you. They should help you figure out how to do the questions, often by working through the main concepts and similar example problems. But then you should do the problems on your own and write up the solutions on your own. If you use another book, an article, or something, you must cite that book just as you would in an English course. You may use any citation style. Now let me talk about internet resources. I know that many of you will do the majority of your mathematics work with a browser open, and that's fine. The internet is full of some amazing resources. There also are some terrible ones, so do be careful with what you're using. But let me tell you my expectation for how to use these resources. First and foremost, you have to cite what you use. Any websites, videos, calculation tools that you use for an assignment should be cited somewhere in your assignment. I find this expectation is often surprising to many students, but I am serious. Internet resources are like any resources, and for academic writing, we cite our resources. We do this to give credit, since those who produced all those websites are helping us do our work. These citations should be specific as possible. 
Don't vaguely say that you used YouTube or Khan Academy. Tell me specifically which video you watched that helped you and give me the URL. When you submit on Moodle, you can use the online text field um, to record your references as you, if you wish so that you don't have to copy out complicated URLs in pen and paper. Online calculation tools, Wolfram Alpha, Desmos, Symbol Lab, and many others are great. Feel free to use them to do calculations and to check your work. However, like all resources, you need to give credit. For calculation tools like these and any other computer algebra system, you can tell me at the start of the assignment that you used a calculation tool and then very briefly indicate the places that it was used in the assignment. If you simply double check your work with any of these tools, just say so in your citations. Even if you do use these tools for calculation and checking, you still need to show enough work to make it clear that you understand the processes. I'll try to give specific instructions on particular assignments about how much calculation work I expect. In the above discussion, I'm talking about sources without in-person interactions, such as online texts, encyclopedias, video explanations, and calculation tools. The internet also has interactive sources, various places where you can go for math help and receive responses from actual people to your specific questions. Some of these are free, some of these are paid services. I want to be very clear about my expectations for these kinds of sites. It's fine to ask general questions on a math forum or help site. A question like, I need help figuring out how to solve systems equations is very reasonable. If you want specific examples to act about, ask about, use the activities in the course and ask people to help you understand the activities. However, please do not post any assignment questions or take home exam questions to any online math forum or help site. I need to draw a clear line here so that it is easy for you to understand my expectation. Posting assignment questions or exam questions online is not acceptable. Often when students look for online material from the course, they will find similar material which differs in notation, definition, or solution methods. Similarly, you may have previous mathematical experience that uses slightly different notations, definitions, or method. I have two important instructions for these situations. If you know another way of doing a problem other than what I covered in the class, you need to explain to me in the assignment why your method works. Anything that comes from outside the course needs context. You can't just use another method and expect me to understand what you're doing. You need to explain. Even if you know a different notation, I actually do insist that you translate your knowledge and practice into the notation I use in the course. You must submit your assignments following the notational convention that, conventions that I introduce in the video and the notes. Two specific internet resources require their own specific notes here. First, Wikipedia is not an authoritative source for quotations and sources. It's an immensely useful sort and a great place to look for reminders and concepts. I frequently use it informally to help remember various pieces of mathematics. But you can't use it as an authority. You can't claim that any definition, notation, or method is correct because you read it on Wikipedia. If you want to do that, look for what Wikipedia uses as its sources and track those down so that you can find a reasonable citation. Last but not least, I need to talk about predictive language models, GPT and its friends on other platforms. Predictive language models can be a pretty fantastic resource, and it's certainly amazing what they can accomplish. I imagine that we are only just starting to understand the implications of these tools. So what are the expectations for using it in mathematics? Well, it depends on what you do with it. You could ask a predictive language model like GPT to write your assignment text for you. However, recall what I wrote previously. When you submit work, I expect that you submit your own work, your own thoughts, your own sentences. Therefore, in my courses, you are not permitted to have a predictive language model like ChatGPT write your assignment text for you. You could ask it to check your calculations for you. Some language models are actually pretty good at math calculations. However, I would discourage this usage as well. Above, I encouraged you to use Wolfram Alpha, Symbol Lab, Desmos, or any other online calculation tool. 
If you're going to use a computer for calculation, I suggest these. Why not use GPT or another language model? Well, because they are language models. They are designed to mimic language. They don't fundamentally have either the goal or the design for accuracy in answers. They'll produce something that looks like and sounds like re reasonable mathematics, but it might simply be totally wrong. Lastly, if you do use GPT or another language model in some other way, you do have to cite it. King's has decided, as a policy for all courses, that use of language model text without citation does in fact constitute plagiarism. This is a serious academic offense with serious repercussions. Even if you are unsure about the two previous points and do end up trying to use a language model, at the very least, please give your source so that you are not plagiarizing. Finally, in some courses, I assign take-home tests and exams. These are very much like assignments, but they do have slightly different expectations. Unlike assignments where working together and getting help are encouraged, I expect you to do the tests entirely on your own. Don't talk to your classmates or anyone else about the questions. Do what you can with your own resources. This is easy. Simply don't talk about the, the take-home exam until you have submitted it. And if you follow that clear instruction, everything will be great.